Good morning, boys and girls. It's library time. Today we're going to read a couple more chapters in our missionary story, The Question of Yams. And it's Easter time, and I want us to remember that He is risen. Jesus has risen from the grave for us because He loved us, and He loved little boys like Yuri, too. Well, we read yesterday that some missionaries came to Yuri's uh, country, <clears throat> and Yuri's father was helping the ladies learn the language, and he called the Bible God's carvings, but the verse he loved the most was that God is mighty, and Yuri's father got saved, and a couple of the other men. Yuri's still not sure what to think about all this. Remember, yams were sweet potatoes, and Yuri's father said he was not going to ask the spirits to help him this year. He was going to ask God to help him as he planted his yams. And the headmen were not very happy about that, were they? And Yuri was cutting some firewood, and he felt a stab of pain. That's where we left off the other day, and we saw the picture, so we know it's a snake, don't we? Yuri jerked his hand back. There on his thumb was a small red mark, the bite of a snake. He stared at the red mark, feeling suddenly ill. Now he would die. He left his axe and stumbled toward his house. Near the house, he met Father. Yuri held at his hand. A snake! It bit me! Father bent over Yuri's hand already. It was starting to swell. Sit down. Don't move. I will get one of the missionaries. Yuri leaned against the house and gazed at his hand. A small boy wandered, pa wandered past, then stopped to look at it. His eyes widened. He threw a glance at Yuri's face and ran off to tell the village. Soon father was back with Joyce. Yuri was not afraid of the tall missionary, even though she had white skin. Sometimes, after father finished helping Joyce with words, she would tell them both the story from God's carving. She took Yuri's hand in her own. What kind of a snake bit you, do you know? He shook his head, wishing he had seen it. But she did not seem upset. Yuri just sat down on the mat. Uh, Yuri, you just lie down on the mat and keep still. I called the doctor on the radio. He will be here as soon as he can. He will bring medicine that's good for snake bites. She glanced at the dark clouds that hung low in the sky. Let's pray that the clouds open up so the helicopter can get here. Yuri watched her yellow hair through his half-closed eyes. Do you see the rainbow on our book? Um, at, behind me in the window, I have a, a crystal, a prism, and the sun is shining on it and it's ascending rainbows. Um, I feel like that's a sign that God is with us because he makes the rainbows and he's with Yuri and his family and people all over the world, isn't he? Back to her story. She nodded to his father. I will get some men to pray, father said. Yuri's mother sat down next to him, weeping softly. Christians came into the house and stood around his mat. They began to pray. Other people crowded in and Yuri heard them whispering, that boy. His father planted their garden in the Christian way. Look what happened to him. Surely he is being punished. Yuri's eyes flew open in alarm. Don't worry about them, said father. You trust God, Yuri. We have talked to him about you, and he will take care of you. Yuri tried to lift his hand, but it was too heavy. He tried to move his feet, but his feet were numb. Bring the nettles. I cannot feel my feet. They are dying. Mother jumped up to get some stinging nettles. But when she rubbed the green plants across his feet, Yuri could feel nothing. He wanted to ask if he were going to die, but he was too tired to say the words. He gazed at Father's face. It was calm, just as it had been when he faced the head men. Yuri thought about Sokoso's threats, the head men's wicked plans. Father is wise to trust in the mighty God, he told himself, and he closed his eyes. Yuri woke with a jerk, wondering what at, at the noise outside. It was as loud as thunder. 
Father stood in the doorway, looking off toward the mountains. But it wasn't thunder. It was the noise of a the sound of a noisy bird that Joyce called a helicopter. The doctor was coming. Long before a white man was bending over him, Yuri felt a prick in his arm, like the prick of a thorn. The doctor stood up. That might do, he said to Yuri's father. The Lord sure answered prayer and got us through those clouds. Father smiled. Then he glanced back at Yuri. We have prayed, and God will do as he wishes. Thank you for coming to help. He went outside with the doctor. I have coconuts here for you, and I want to give some to the pilot of the helicopter. The next time Yuri opened his eyes, he felt better. He could as Soon he could leave his mat and sit in front of his house. He blinked in the sunlight. He could feel its warm rays seeping in his bones to make him strong. One morning... As Yuri sat in the sun, he saw that the ground was cracked. Isn't this the rainy season, he thought. The sun has been shining for many days, too many days. What about the yams? They would die without the rain. Father, Yuri pulled himself to his feet. Father hadn't said much about the garden lately, but the Christians had been praying more than ever. He plodded down to see the yams. It seemed like a long way, and his breath was coming fast by the time he got there. The plants were still green, but the vines had not even spread across the mounds. Their curly ends seemed to droop. Their leaves were much too small. Yuri sighed. The yams had to get some rain soon, or the yams would die. So now we are in another situation. It's not been raining, and Yuri is afraid that the yams are going to die, and that God isn't mighty after all. So we will read some more of our story later. You have a wonderful day, boys and girls. I miss you, and I love you very much.